Edmund, when you told me about breaking into Hugo Merrick's crypt, I told you it was crazy, and you promised me that you wouldn't. Look, I didn't plan on doing this. It doesn't thing. matter, all right? It doesn't matter whether it was spontaneous, whether it was premeditated. What were you thinking? Were you going to take Hugo's bones to some lab and force him at gunpoint to do DNA testing? I didn't testing? know what I, didn't know what I was going to do, all right? And now you've been arrested. I, I, I wasn't thinking, okay? I just... I got a little crazy. You say you have truth on your side. If you really believe that, then why don't you trust the courts to decide this issue Brooke, for the you? the courts are all screwed up, all right? They're just protecting the rich and the dead. You ask me if I have had all I can take from you. I think the real question is, how much can you take? What do you mean? Edmund, I love you. And believe me, it would be a lot easier if I didn't. But I have my career to think about. I have Jamie to think about. So, so, what are you, so what are you saying? You don't need me? I think it's the other way around. You don't need me. Maybe that's not true. This obsession that you have with proving Dimitri wrong about your father, it's consuming you. It's destroying us. And if you can't see that... Okay, just tell me what you want me to do, all right? I will do anything to save us. If you want to save us, if you want to save what we have, you have to save yourself first. You mean get professional help? What do you think? All right. If that's what you want. It has to be your decision, Edmund. Okay, I'll do it. All right. Because I don't want to lose you, and for you, I would do anything. Oh. All right, if you want to see somebody, it has to be because you want to. It has to be because you realize that you need help. Don't do it for me. Lucy said she thought you would be here. You and I have nothing to talk about. Yes, we do. Helga stopped by my house late last night. What does that have to do with me? She was looking for Angelique, but she took some time out to say some very hateful things about Edmund. Edmund can't defend himself against an old woman? Of course he can. That's not the point. Look, he doesn't know I'm here. And he won't like it when he finds out, but I am very worried about him. I'm concerned that he's going to crack under this pressure. The unanswered questions, the prospect of prison, what do you expect me to do? You could stop it now. I'll talk to Helga, but that's all I'll do. Goodbye, Brooke. What is left when honor is lost? The family motto. More like the family joke. You'd better leave. You know, you really are a hypocrite. Now! You know, when I was doing that article, about you, I did some research on your father. He was a very interesting man. He seemed very fond of quoting Roman philosophers while he was gutting rival companies. And you know what? You're just like him, aren't you? Except it's your brother that you're destroying. There's no proof that he's my brother. Because you don't want the proof. You know, you really are a coward. And you're desperate. I am desperate for the truth, yes. Does this mean something to you? Why don't you put your hand on Hugo's vault and you think about your family motto and then you tell me if imprisoning Edmund is the honorable thing to do. Nobody walks away from a childhood like that unscarred, but he is not a coward. Well, my hand is off to him. Do you think he's anxious to prove that his biological father hated him so much that he made him your servant or that he wants the world to know that his mother just stood by Why Alfred made him into a punching bag? Believe me, he would love to turn his back on this place forever. Then why doesn't he? Because he can't. He can't until he gets the truth. And he's not afraid of whatever comes. But you, you are not man enough to do that, and I pity you. You know why? Because you need the lie as much as he needs the truth. Yes, I have heard it all before. It's not your father's tomb that you want preserved. It's your childhood illusions about him. No, the ogre that you're describing is not the father that I knew. 
because he treated you differently? Because I am his son! All right, Dimitri, why don't we talk about what you did know? Did you know that Alfred was beating Edmund? Yes. In the beginning, whether he remembers it or not, I tried to help Edmund. But Alfred just came down on him that much harder. I'm not blaming you. You were just a child. But if you knew that Alfred was mistreating Edmund, don't you think Hugo knew? Did that caring, revered paragon ever try to stop Alfred? No. And he was an adult. He was Alfred's all-powerful employer. I mean, the fact that he looked the other way, doesn't that tell you something? Could you stand by and watch a child be mistreated? But your father did, Dimitri. Uh, he could have stopped Edmund's pain in an instant. And instead, he added to it. And that's the man whose tomb you are loath to violate. And if you cannot let Edmund exhume Hugo's body, then tear down that stinking family motto. You're angry. I'm fed up. Wait, I know, but if you just find it in your heart just to give it a little while longer. And what, have patience? I have nothing but patience. Nothing but. Look, Edmund loves you, and he needs you more than he even knows. He needs me at home. He needs me spinning my wheels like Penelope so he can play Odysseus. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's classic Edmund. He tells me, don't worry, you know, I'm just sailing off into uncharted territory for a little while. I'll be home soon. Well, Penelope waited for 20 years. This is quite the same thing. Isn't it, Jack? I mean, here I am. Here I stand again. I'm trying to be flip. I'm trying to be hopeful. And all the time, I have one eye on the door and one ear, and I'm listening for his car. Every sound I hear, my heart starts to pound. I mean, it's like, is that him? I mean, it's over and over again with every passing car. It's like I want to jump out of my skin. And at the same time, it's like, it's something I'm used to. It's become a syndrome. And it's something, believe me, I can gladly do without. Well, you know, we could call him. <laughs> well, well, then I could call him. Look, I'm worried about him too, all right? We all are, Brooke. No. Because if I call, if I act worried, it's like I'm smothering him. It's like I'm fighting his battle. So no, no thank you. Brooke, I, I know it's difficult to remember this, but, but, but this man is in a very unique situation. He's always in a unique situation. Ever since this mess began, I mean, I don't even remember how many times. All I know is that he covers up, he hides whatever it is that's going on inside him so that he can guarantee me no matter what, he is there for me. He can be crazed, but he will be there for me whenever I need him. I want to tell you something. Was he there when we had the engagement party? And where was he when the judge denied exhuming Hugo? I mean, it, isn't it time that I, that I looked at the writing on the wall? Brooke, you're frustrated. I am mad, all right? I'm just not going to take it anymore. I, I feel like I'm some doormat in some country western song, and I'm wringing my hands, and I'm wailing on about how I'm standing by my man. Standing by someone you love does not make you a doormat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And fairy tales have happy endings, don't they? The bottom line is that he needs you. What about me, Angelique? I mean, how long am I going to find myself in my own unique situation until I get it? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, where I stand, the proof is in on Edmund. Unique situation or not, he consistently makes a choice. And it's so convenient. It, he conveniently forgets that he has any life, that he has any love for anybody, including me. What he has is that obsession to prove that he is a Merrick. How incredibly... I can't do it again. I mean, it feels like it's my own sanity that's at stake here. It's two steps forward and three steps back with Edmund. It's, it's like a slow death. It's unbearable. But what about those two steps? Aren't they the real thing? What is the real thing? You're asking me. I obviously don't have a clue. Uh, 
real thing is true love. It, it, it's a kind of unconditional giving that comes right from the heart, Brooke, and you and Edmund have that. You two are meant to be together. Can't you see that? No. No, not anymore. You made a choice. Obsession doesn't leave much room for choice. And you're the only one who can save him. Well, who's going to save me? <sighs> it's a bad dream. He always wants Edmund when he wakes up like that. It's Edmund he depends on. It's Edmund's comfort. Damn. A bad dream? I know he wanted Edmund. Edmund makes him laugh, you know? Edmund's wonderful with Jamie. Yeah. How wonderful can you be when you're not there? But, look, doesn't that say more about what kind of a man he is than whether or not he's always there when he's supposed to be? Edmund loves Jamie. Edmund loves Jamie like Jamie was his own son. A man who is capable of loving children, who is willing to make that emotional investment. That's the Edmund you fell in love with. That is the man whose life is at stake here. I wish it could be that simple. If you love him, go to him. Won't you help him, Brooke? Please. You know what we're saying is true. Well, at least you want to believe it. That's the terrible part. I, I want to. I mean, when Edmund speaks from his heart, when he looks in my eyes, and he tells me that he loves me, and that he wants to be a father to Jamie, and when he tells me that we are all that's important to him. He means it. He means it then. And then it's easy, and it's simple. Brooke, I, I, I think you're just going to have to trust these feelings. I want to, Jack. I try. I mean, I think of Edmund, and I think of the man that he is, and the man that he so desperately wants to become. And for that moment when he's holding me, I believe it. I believe it. With all my heart. I believe, too. I believe in the Edmund I knew as a child. The kind, gentle little boy whose spirit somehow survived the shame and abuse. The boy who became a man. The man who holds you and comforts you. The man Jamie responds to. And hey, Brooke, what a, what a gift it was to both Jamie and Edmund that he did survive, huh? A part of him did. Spirit heals itself. And that spark that you saw in Edmund, don't you think that's worth going after tonight? I don't know. You're not a quitter. Will you stay with Jamie? You won't be sick. No, I hope you're right. Your coat, madam? 